Welcome back to Aliandri Yamashita and Martin Disbank's show Urban Transcendence on this beautiful winter day here in Hawaii, island of Oahu, city of uh, Honolulu, around in the upper 70s or 80s today, your perfect temperature to be here. So uh, today's show is going to be part of, as we uh, started off uh, last time, a little uh, building material block and building science block. However, uh, we have changed the order of presentations. Uh, the one who was supposed to go today uh, was very happy to uh, sort of step back and allow to improvise, which I believe is sometimes the best in life. So I have a very special guest with us today who comes all the way from California, from Santa Cruz. And um, it's uh, Chi, uh, who is going to be here with us today. Um, and so, uh, uh, Chi Kawahara, mm -hmm. and thank you very much for being here with us today. Uh, it's My a pleasure. pleasure to having you. And uh, you're going to actually talk about um, less about the building materials themselves, but how they could potentially be applied to a building that is, in the best way of the show, uh, uh, transcending and transitioning from what I like to call a, a fossil setting of the 20th century to a post-fossil uh, scenario of the 21st century that we have just begun. And you, in fact, have uh, 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 been, uh, you are responsible for a case study that um, is, is very important for, for, that, for that mission and for that message. So, um, so we decided, you said you're not an architect. Uh, you're an, right. In fact, uh, you have an economy, uh, a major in, in, in economy. Uh, here from uh, UH, mm -hmm. and um, so you said you're not the expert, you're not the architect. In fact, I think at the end of the show, the audience will understand that you are, in fact, the expert. <laughs> but to kick it off and in the right order, as you kind of asked, uh, me being, I guess I have to admit, uh, some kind of an expert, um, I will, uh, we will share with the audience what that, that system is, that energy efficiency system that you based your you're building on, and it's called the passive house. Yes. And the passive house, the house is, is written differently, and not for me, it sounds very familiar, because it's H-A-U-S, and that's the German way of writing house. And so um, it's a system that started off in the early 90s and originates in Germany, my home country, and ever since has been applied and is applied, uh, or is getting there all over the world. And as far as um, all the way west and the United States, Santa Cruz, California. So uh, Zuri will help us now to show, uh, we do it as a little uh, uh, Pecha Kucha here, as we had said, which also made sense because uh, your uh, ethnical background is Japanese. Yes. In fact, you grew up and you were born in Japan. You lived there for seven years, you mm -hmm. have told me. So this is sort of the format that makes sense to do this a little bit here, although we're not going to time it strictly to the 20 seconds or whatever they are in their purest form. So Zuri, if you can give us the first slide, please, um, to share with the audience. So the passive house is basically a system. I always, to my students, I say it has four, the system has four columns, four legs. And you know, standing on four legs, like many animals do, is in a very solid way. So it's orientation, insulation, air tightness, and heat recovery. And that's what the slide here basically points out here. It was done by a collaborator, a scientific uh, collaborator, Matthias Wolfhard here, who at the very top left, you can see this uh, yellow uh, color coding, which is basically, this is a section of a building. So for the audience that's not used to looking at architectural drawings, it's like as if you cut with your knife through a cake. Um, so that's how you look at the building here in section. And the yellow line basically indicates that, um, that it's about insulation. The building needs to be wrapped with insulation all the way around, including under the building. Um, the next uh, slide is basically about orientation. And that's about daylight efficiency. So you don't want to, uh, sorry, go, go back, please. Um, I, I, meant, I didn't mean the next slide. <laughs> I mean the next picture on the, on the same slide. Thank you very much. So the next picture there uh, in the middle to the left is basically showing that you want to use natural daylight as much as possible to not waste energy for artificial light. Mm -hmm. And um, as well, he used um, uh, the source of daylight is the sun. So you use that sun uh, for daylight efficiency, but you also use it majorly 
in the climate and culture the system was invented to heat the home. And that's actually where the name comes from. Passive is not usually a naturally positive uh, term mm -hmm. in our languages, I have to say. Yeah. Uh, so some people get irritated. This is why another working title for the show could have been um, uh, passive house active architecture. And, um, but we uh, basically use, um, uh, what it tries to say is that a building uses passive uh, energy um, to, to condition itself. So it means uh, no active systems, no burning oil or, or gas or coal, but basically using the elements that are natural and are abundant and they're renewable. And the, the sun basically is one of these main sources, especially in the climates where, where the system originates from. Right, and, and the climate matters because depending on where your house or your building is located, you have different amounts of sun. Mm -hmm. So you're actually being in tune mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. sun mm -hmm. of your location. Mm -hmm. As you beautifully live with your beautiful house, as the audience will see in a bit so i uh this is just i'm the pre-show here the warming up band so to speak for your beautiful building here and i'm gonna use uh, the body of work of my ohana practice with my dad and my sister cynthia to show you a couple of projects we have done basically to the system and zuri if you can give us uh, the second picture please um so orientation basically means that um in these cold climates or temperate climates, the, the, the north facade basically gets hit by the cold wind in the winter. So you want to keep that close. In the context of this building that the audience sees here, it's actually we eliminated that facade and burned the building, meaning we put actually soil over it. And this is a green roof that basically um, allows, it's a kindergarten, right. the children to grow their food on the roof um, as another aspect of being self-sustained and training them to be more in balance with in a more holistic way that actually your building is also not just um, you know stopping with the passive house uh, performance meaning the energy efficiency it goes further as we will talk about so uh, to the third slide Zuri uh, the building then to the south um, has to be uh, widely opened and so mostly it's glass here uh, that basically allows uh, the sun to basically um, enter the, the, the spaces uh, in their very low angle in the winter time and basically go deeply into the space. The next slide, please. Uh, this is one of my favorite and most compelling pictures because it shows the building in its first winter when the sun wasn't out there for three weeks and there was blizzard. You can see the snow drifts piling up in front of the... And you can see in the front the little... Uh, cozy cushion area that the kids were building and they were building this right in front of the glass and that's only possible because of this high performance glass. It's triple pane, argon filled, uh, big effort, uh, huge um, um, also investment. This glass obviously costs a lot but it does a great job in keeping the temperature constant without burning fossil fuels. Next slide please, sorry. And the next slide is going to show the summer condition because what's good in the winter in a temperate climate is bad in the summer because the sun is basically not your friend in the summer and you want to keep it out. So this is here where there are these concrete frames and the shades go down and due to the knowledge of geometry, um, the next slide, sorry, please, uh, the sun um, um, is basically um, um, uh, you see the, the shades don't have to go down all the way so the sun can basically um, uh, stay outside but the children have the, the view and the connectivity to yeah. the landscape. This is brilliant. This is a kindergarten, right? It's a yeah. kindergarten, exactly. And so the next one is also a kindergarten. Uh, next slide, Zuri. It's actually the first passive house building in kindergarten that we ever did for my hometown Hanover uh, in Germany. and. It also sort of differentiates a, a, a rule that says the north facade, as I said, should be closed. And here we decided to, regardless, um, uh, seed some windows in there mm -hmm. in, in a very special way, as you can see here. Next slide, sorry. To then, however, keep the wall relatively closed because we got conditions like that. They're pretty, pretty harsh. And again, in, in this condition, the building survives and it's self-sustained without using fossil fuels, which is pretty amazing. Next slide, sorry. Uh, same then to the south here in a different way with an undulated facade to maximize even more the solar gain. Uh, when you see light on there, this is sort of the unusual condition. It's almost what they shouldn't have saw, shown because this condition we hardly uh, try, to, try to have. We try to avoid that right. because we have the high daylight efficiency. Number 10 again, uh, Zuri, please. 
uh, shows then how this uh, how these buildings could feel. So they're um, you know um, they're they're highly um, I I always call this here planet friendly because you know we make a contribution to save the, the world by you know having um, you know contribute to um, reduce greenhouse gases and also. Um, uh, climate change, prevent climate change, but uh, last but not at all least, we create hopefully environments that are people friendly, which hopefully this picture here shows that's a very pleasant space for the kids to grow up in a very natural and inspiring environment. So the next uh, slide, Zuri, is another typology because um, it's not limited to certain building types. You can apply it to many buildings. This is an office building. Um, that um, basically keeps the northern facade relatively closed, and then the building gets bigger in section and in plan. And next slide, please, sorry, to once again soak up the sun the most to the south. Uh, this cap of the building is going to keep it cool in the in the summer. Next slide, please. And um, so once again, to create a very natural, very daylight, flushed, um, generous, and, and pleasant interior situation. The next slide um, is a critical one because it shows uh, a random Googled image when you punch in the word passive house. So it doesn't necessarily imply good architecture, so the people friendliness. And this is, I think, what, what you're building has an important mission because it shows that actually it can combine energy efficiency with, with beautiful dwelling and living in a beautiful home. So this is sort of trying to encourage us designers and architects and clients to basically keep the people friendliness in mind as much as the planet friendliness at the same time. Mm -hmm. So um, next picture, Zuri, is going to get to the, to the typology that was originally designed for, which is houses, single family houses. Uh, the most uh, sort of considerate building and responsible building is actually the one we don't build because whenever we build, until we're at the point where we can build almost like we used to build in these uh, vernacular societies where we weren't creating a carbon footprint because it was all natural, until we will get there, which will take a while, we're working on it, and you made a significant contribution to it, uh, we better don't build because when we don't create a carbon footprint. And so when we then reuse a building, so the next most considerate or sustainable is the one that already exists because it used a carbon footprint. We try to get that out of that. So this is such a house. It's a 300-year-old farmhouse. Next picture, Zuri, that uh, the clients, which was a young family who in mm -hmm. inherited it, weren't happy because of it was very dark and cold and damp. So next picture, uh, the client, um, gave us a week to, they originally wanted a new house, and they gave us a week to convince them to basically fulfill everything that we're hoping in the old house to do, and a new house to do in the old home. And that's the, the result of that. The next picture, Zuri. Um, um, uh, we did it this way, that we took out a lot of the infill, and we replaced it with a new uh, thermal and, 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 and spatial enclosure out of triple pane glass. The last two projects, I have to admit, shame on me, we tried hard to actually talk our clients into doing it strictly to the Pacifar standard, which leads to a certification, but they weren't comfortable enough, so we didn't do it. So we, now we could assess it and look at the energy efficiency and we will see where it is. And so that leads us uh, to your project, which you're going to share with us and show sure. to us where you actually achieved all that. So the next picture, please. Very, so very just to put a context to my project, um, what I'm sharing is my, <clears throat> my personal experience as a homeowner, mm -hmm. not as an architect, not mm -hmm. as a builder, not as a developer, real estate agent, and all that. We did work at all those people, mm -hmm. but there are a certain number of um, decisions mm -hmm. and choices and paths that you go down um, as a homeowner. Great. So um, just to put frame this mm -hmm. in how much sun we mm -hmm, get. Mm -hmm. So um, I live in a town called Santa Cruz, which is about 40 minute drive from Silicon Valley over mm -hmm. a mountain pass. And it's a coastal town, mm -hmm. a lot of surfing out there. Mm -hmm. But everyone wears wetsuits because, mm -hmm. you know, water temperature is about 55 to 60 degrees a year round. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, it's a very mild climate mm -hmm. where we have um, an average of average high of, um, you know, 60 to 75 degrees mm -hmm, year-round. Mm -hmm. 
We're going to take a little necessary technical break, and we're going to be back with you, Chi, okay. and your passion about passive house. Look forward to. Think Tech Hawaii, Hawaii's only live television channel dedicated to featuring local ideas and innovations in technology, clean energy, and global awareness. In celebration of our 15th anniversary, Think Tech Hawaii invites you to Think Tech United, a special holiday celebration at the downtown Laniakea YWCA. Join us on December 11th for speakers, poo-poos, awards, prizes, and surprises. And don't miss our featured speaker presentation on leadership by Robbie Alm. If you would like to network, celebrate, and have Pauhana with Think Tech Hawaii, RSVP online at thinktechhawaii.com and reserve your spot today. Mahalo for being a part of our growing audience. Let's keep Think Tech Hawaii's mission shining bright. See you Thursday. So welcome back to Chi Kabahara's uh, show today, her passion about her passive house. So please tell us more. Sure. Um, so it's a mild climate where Santa Cruz is. And um, what I would like to share with you today is to give you a quick tour by, you know, your pictures of the exterior. Mm -hmm. And then we'll share some data, what it means. And then we'll um, take a look on the inside with, you know, some features that might be interested to the people in Hawaii. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Can we get uh, slide 19 back, sorry, please? Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, you know, before I start, there are a number of um, Hawaii connections, right? So I, you know, grew up in Hawaii. You know, I went to Kalihikai Elementary, Kalakaua Intermediate, Farrington. So I grew up in Kalihi. Mm -hmm. So there's a connection to Hawaii. But our um, builder, the guy that did the um, general contracting for the home, he's um, born and raised in Kauai. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he still has, um, you know, family there. So he goes there to work on projects mm -hmm, from time to time. Mm -hmm. And um, the um, Passive House consultant and our architect mm -hmm. has a tie to Hawaii because his business partner, mm -hmm. as you know, Alison mm -hmm. Kwok, mm -hmm. is a, you know, um, originally from Hawaii. She now teaches architecture. Perfect. Right? We say hi to Alison. We're going to send her <laughs> the link. Yay. <laughs> um, and um, another important person on this project is my husband, Kurt Hurley. Now, he's a fifth generation Californian. But his mother actually spent some time at University of mm -hmm, Hawaii, mm -hmm. um, you know, when she was going to college. Mm -hmm. So we have a number of Hawaii ties. Mm -hmm. So um, going with slide number 19, the front of the house, this is a uh, 1922 house built by a gentleman named Frank Chapman. And it was a three bedroom, one bathroom house originally. And in 1947, um, the third owner added an addition. So it became a three bedroom, two bathroom house. Mm -hmm. And we, my husband and I bought it in tw 2010 mm -hmm. as the fifth owner. Mm -hmm. So you'll see the before and after picture and you can say, see that the shape um, it really didn't change. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we wanted to do was to preserve the look and feel mm -hmm. of the arts and text, um, mm -hmm. arts and crafts mm -hmm. architecture. Mm -hmm. On the next slide, slide 20, uh, we now see a back view. The back um, looks quite a bit different from, bef um, from before and after. It was a, um, I think at some point they had put stucco all over the back. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to have the lap siding look and we didn't add any square footage to the house but we expanded the feel of the house by adding a deck mm -hmm. and an arbor. Mm -hmm. And because the south is almost, you know, perfectly due south, we get a lot of light, mm -hmm. a lot of light mm -hmm. and sun. Mm -hmm. So the arbor, as you can see, is used for shading mm -hmm. in the summer. That's mm -hmm. how we control the sun mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. dance with the sun. Mm -hmm. Because in the winter, when the sun angle is low, mm -hmm. we want to mm -hmm. have the sun mm -hmm. come in mm -hmm. and warm up the space. You also added a couple more windows so you get more solar gain, right? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And speaking of solar gain, mm -hmm. um, you know, the windows on the south side of the house is um, tuned, it's coated so that we do have the high solar heat gain, mm -hmm. whereas on the other, you know, three sides of the house, they're um, coated so that it will bounce out the heat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on the next slide, we look at the west side of the house, and here, um, you know, we added a deck and an arbor again 
to give us kind of the indoor outdoor connection um, from the kitchen. One of the things that um, was kind of unusual, not, not unusual, was typical of the house of that vintage was to have what's called a California cooler. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there was ventilation kind of like carved into the side of the wall to mm -hmm. have like natural ventilation to like cool the vegetables and stuff that you store the um, mm -hmm. cupboard. Mm -hmm. But what that meant was that the, um, the house was very leaky in mm -hmm. terms of air tightness. Mm -hmm. And as you know, Passive House mm -hmm. is all about air tightness mm -hmm. to keep Mm -hmm. The temperature inside, mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. like in a cooler, you know, mm -hmm. very constant. Very good analogy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, that was one of the main challenges for mm -hmm. our builder who had mm -hmm. to air seal the house, and he mm -hmm. did a pretty mm -hmm. darn good job. Yeah. And, and maybe we add for the audience, so basically if you built your house, if you decide to build it to Passive House Standard and want to get it certified, there's a benchmark. Yes. And maybe the people might know a lead. And I always say lead is relative and, and passive house is absolute because the number is 15 kilowatt hours per square meter mm -hmm. per year. Yeah, right. And that you have to achieve, then you're a passive house. If you don't, you don't. And the, the audience might say, well, what is 15 kilowatt hours and what are meters? That's more metric. Well, we can make it sort of memorable and visualize and can say that little heating or cooling unit you end up having left is close to non-existing and has the size of a hair dryer. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, and there is a PHPP, the passive house planning package. Mm -hmm. It's basically a software, it's like an Excel sheet where you punch in all your parameters mm -hmm. of uh, surface and and also uh, thermal capacities and insulation R values and at the end it gives you a result. And if you right. are not good enough, you go back and the system doesn't care how. This is up to you and the architect to go back. So it's very discriminative, right, in a way to say we gotta we gotta make this happen. So it's like right. you know right. And and the modeling is such that, you know, when you put those things in and when they and actually they built the house to those, you know, standards and um, the monitor and test out the house for periods you know after occupancy it has shown consistently a, a huge reduction in energy mm -hmm, use mm -hmm. um, by you know 80 90 I think these are actually the next slides right uh, not quite no, yet. Not yet yeah we'll, right. we'll, we'll get there uh -huh. As, but we're still on uh, I think slide number 21, 21. Number. Um, Mm -hmm. We'll move on to slide number 22. Mm -hmm. So on um, the east side of the house, we added a gate that sort of gives it the you know Asian feel. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if it's really visible, but there's a yellow, uh, there's a green sloping side. That mm -hmm. was a architectural feature that my husband really wanted to have, mm -hmm. where you know um, arts and crafts style houses sometimes had this flared skirt mm -hmm. type of um, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. look, mm -hmm. and that um, was aesthetically beautiful, but it had a functional purpose of kind of like you know having all the rain and water kind of go out and away from the foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then um, moving on to the next slide, we're going to take a look at the inside of the house. Mm -hmm. Now we didn't do the house. Um, just for energy's sake, mm -hmm. right? Very important message. Yes, yes. You know, you don't necessarily want to take a house that was built like five years ago when the materials are all usable and just tear it down and just do, redo it. Mm -hmm. We happen to have an, you know, 90 year old house mm -hmm. that had um, deferred maintenance. Mm -hmm. And this slide, this uh, before and after look of the master bathroom <laughs> is a pretty good indication of the of the house mm -hmm. in the before state. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, we replaced all the walls, all the plumbing, mm -hmm. all the electrical, um, mm -hmm. put in a ventilation system, put mm -hmm. in insulation, mm -hmm. we got new windows and doors because it was time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we were really fortunate to have a house that was just primed for that, mm -hmm. but it had good bones, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Which so the, call the skeleton. The skeleton, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So we kept the original foundation and the floor and the framing and mm -hmm. the roof mm -hmm. and we pretty much replaced everything else and I think that's part of the key where we were able to um, achieve the passive house standard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because as you know air sealing is very mm -hmm. very very mm -hmm. difficult mm -hmm. and um, if you hadn't gotten down to that level it mm -hmm. wouldn't be possible. Mm -hmm. 
and maybe again to make it more understandable. You're actually talking understandable maybe at this point before we forget and we shouldn't. You're actually about to write a book yes. about your experiences, but for the time being, you have an awesome blog that I think we're going to show everyone's in the show. And um, it's amazing. I have to say it's already, the book is already there. It just needs to be physical, I guess, become physical. But, but you have broken it down into chapters and categories and really, really educate uh, people very well in, in a way that they can understand it. So you basically take it down from its very scientific, technocratic, bureaucratic Excel sheet, thing that only experts can actually work with down to this like well it's you know let's just um, it's not rocket science that's what you basically say you know it's basically basic logic that cultures everywhere in the world have been knowing and relying on for the longest time until societies got hooked on and addicted to fossil fuel and this is just reconnecting however using also the uh, uh, achievements of, of modern times which I think, you know, we come to the next slide to the systems. The very first slides actually had a column that I didn't say because we wanted to move on, but it talked about some active components in a mm -hmm. passive house. So, yes. so we will hear about that soon Okay, too. so um, um, let's go back to slide 23 of the ugly bathroom. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> Very ugly, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> Gross, right. it's, uh, it's lovely <laughs> ugly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But you know, um, one, one of the things I wanted to point out here is that um, doing a remodel is kind of greener than building from scratch. As you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. that you know, you can save more energy by not building a house, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So rather than building a brand new house, mm -hmm. which is the direction we um, originally wanted to go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but we went with an existing house and a remodel because we wanted to be in a location that was walkable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because what that does is mm -hmm. avoids transportation, you know, costs and all of that gas and, you know, yeah. Perfectly. That's very perfect guest for our show. We had a couple of shows ago. Uh, we had Thomas Lim, whom you met, because you were nicely on my studio review two days ago. And Thomas was on the show, and his, his, uh, the title of the show was The Bigger Picture. Mm. Because maybe we may insert that that's maybe the criticism about passive house that is too isolated, looking only at the building performance as far as energy. And so Devil's Advocate would say, um, if you put a perfect passive house somewhere in the middle of nowhere and you have, drive, you have to drive there with your big fossil-fueled SUV, you might offset the advantages of your high energy performance so actually what you bring up is the bigger context of actually walkable communities. Yes. All the other things you will get to in your, in your further slides are very important. Without them, uh, you know, we, we might make the system irrelevant because it doesn't help the plan of friendliness, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a very good yeah. Uh, yeah. thanks for reminding us of that. And I love being able to walk downtown, which is about a mile walk, but it's a nice distance where you can take a stroll you know, mm -hmm. go out to eat, have dinner, watch mm -hmm. movie, and mm -hmm. stroll back. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's it's really nice. Yeah. 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 As you yeah. yeah. So from the bathroom, you're going to move over to in the kitchen on slide 24. Mm -hmm. So as you know, um, you know, kitchens of, you know, that time period, 1920s, mm -hmm. was very closed off. And it's kind of charming in a way that you have these little, you know, skirt under the sink and mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you know flower poles that you can pull out but we opted to go with something more um, up-to-date and functional mm -hmm. by putting in um, you know energy efficient appliances mm -hmm. recycled materials like mm -hmm. uh, recycled tile and the countertop actually is made out of paper a product called paper stone mm -hmm. and um, portions um, of the um, the breakfast bar there is using a recycled material that was you know, formerly the wall, mm -hmm. using those beadboards. Mm -hmm. So we combined a lot of different things. We did knock down one wall mm -hmm. um, to give it a little more expansive feel in the kitchen. But the rest of the house, we liked the way it was laid out. Mm -hmm. So we didn't go tearing down the walls and trying to recreate the space. Mm -hmm. um, it was really nice as the architect in 1922 had laid mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Now in slide 25, um, I'm going to share the data. So the data is um, taking a snapshot of the temperature of the house about a year ago, you know, one o'clock in the morning in November. So it's kind of 
cold outside, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. cold for me, cold mm -hmm. for Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 49 degrees is definitely cold. And in t on the inside of the house, it's, you know, high 60s, low 70s, comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe touch cold for people in Hawaii, but mm -hmm. you know, for us, mm -hmm. it's comfortable um, <laughs> in the mainland. Mm -hmm. And on the side, uh, on this slide, what you see is a copy or a section of our um, energy bill. So our utility, Pacific Gas and um, Electric, um, bills us for electricity and for gas, because we use natural gas, mm -hmm. uh, for our hot water backup. Now, $7.02 is how much we use for gas, and that's mm -hmm. technically how we heat the house. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very low. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and our electricity usage for the month was Thirty-six dollars and three cents, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which I know from Hawaii, um, it feels like wow, that's really cheap. You know, they must have really cheap electric rates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's way cheaper than Hawaii, but we also have really low usage mm -hmm. because of the various uh, efficiency measures that mm -hmm. we put inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And moving on to slide twenty-six, we'll take a look at the household energy use um, across mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the um, this graph by EIA, it's a government organization called Energy Information Administration. Mm -hmm. They have all kinds of interesting graphs and inter mm -hmm. um, information mm -hmm. about how energy is used um, mm -hmm. in the United States. Mm -hmm. And here, what you see is that um, on the left side, you see you know, the energy consumption, and then the right side is the expenditure or the annual uh, utility bill that you pay. So you see the gray bar is what what's used by U.S. as a whole, and then the, um, the light green is uh, within a certain region, and the dark green is California, and I inserted um, my data mm -hmm. from our first year mm -hmm. of living in the house, mm -hmm. and adding up all of the dollars and cents, kilowatt hours, and the uh, mm -hmm. therms that mm -hmm. we use for our energy. We use a heck of a lot less energy than mm -hmm. average mm -hmm. homes across the states, mm -hmm you know, across California, and it really did what uh, it was advertised. Great. We're going to take another short technical break to then be back with Chie's passion for her passion, passion passive house. <laughs> that was a good time breaker. <laughs> See you in a minute. <laughs> Hi, I'm your host on Think Tech Asia, Bill Sharp. I look forward to, to you joining us each Monday between 4 and 5 o'clock uh, when we film right here in our studio in downtown Honolulu. The show, Think Tech Asia, focuses on contemporary events in Asia. And by Asia, we mean anything from Hawaii, south to Australia and New Zealand, well, west to Pakistan, and as far north as the Russian Far East. Clearly, this is one of the most economically dynamic centers of the world. Uh, and we bring you up to date on what's going on in a whole host of countries in this very vital region. We look forward to seeing you. Aloha. So we're back for our show with Chi Kawahara's passion for her passive house. So we heard some more technical, interesting details now. Thank you. We're going to go to slide number seven to look at the project cost. So one of the questions that we get often is, so what kind of a premium did you pay for your house, mm -hmm. right? Because people want to know um, what this cost. Mm -hmm. So I took, um, this is a pie chart of the cost um, of our project for putting in everything. And um, the yellow portion represents what we could identify as the the extras that we did to make it a passive house. Mm -hmm. And it turns out to be about you know seven or eight percent of the project cost, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. isn't that much. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the entire project cost, um, you know, being able to do a gut remodel at two hundred and ninety six dollars per square foot mm -hmm. is not bad. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. not the cheapest, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it certainly isn't in the outrageous luxury market area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is what you know, what represents for a um, you know average mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, homeowner that you know mm -hmm. most people can relate to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's maybe to to explain to people why this is the background picture here. You see, actually, this is a potentially a, a wine passive house, the H home that the audience has been exposed to every once in a while. And, it was on a BIA show, the Building Industry Association. And these are normal people walking by. These normal people yeah. got interested in. So you have a rather, this is why you were also said, you don't want to share where you come from, you know. So you have a rather 
sort of common, almost pro proletarian approach to these things that you say you want to get it to the, to the normal people, right? You mm -hmm. don't want this to be an exclusive thing that you can only afford to be green, which by the way, Midori is Japanese, Japanese and means green. green. Yeah. So it's a combination of our cultures, mm -hmm. uh, Midori, Japanese, and the spelling of house yes. where the system comes from, from yes. Germany. Yes, yes. And we use the German spelling for house uh, for passive vowels, partly because passive vowels, and my husband also speaks German. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it all comes full circle. <laughs> All right, um, so now we are at uh, slide 28 um, to show a picture of our solar thermal system. So we used the sun to heat our hot water. And um, our house was um, modeled to use about half a hair dryer worth of energy mm -hmm. to heat it comfortably. Mm -hmm. And the makeup heat actually comes from the sun because we warm up mm -hmm. the hot water you know, on the panels in the roof. It mm -hmm. goes into a large storage tank and that hot water is pumped through this hydronic air exchanger mm -hmm. and it gets distributed through the house via mm -hmm. heat recovery ventilator mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, it works. Mm -hmm. We're very happy with that. Mm -hmm. Moving next to water usage on slide 29, um, most people know well that um, California is experiencing this drought. Mm -hmm. Everyone is mm -hmm. really, really sensitive about water mm -hmm. and um, this manifested for me in one way yesterday when I was at my parents' house mm -hmm. in, um, you know, in Honolulu, and they had this uh, faucet that was dripping mm -hmm. that wouldn't shut off. Mm -hmm. That you fixed. Uh, I didn't, with, with the help of my dad, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. I instigated the fix, and we spent Great. the whole afternoon doing a fix. Great. And my mother says, you know, it's only a water-sensitive Californian that would get us to do something like this. There you go. You come back and teach where you come from. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if you look at this graph here, it comes from um, East Bay Municipal Utility District. Mm -hmm. It shows that, you know, the toilet, toilets and washer are the largest components of mm -hmm. indoor water use. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that uh, we're doing with our house is we're using rainwater mm -hmm. to flush the toilets and do mm -hmm. laundry. Mm -hmm. So right now, California is experiencing the storm. Mm -hmm. So my water tank is full mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're using that to uh, mm -hmm. flush toilets. So. In, in all fairness to the title of the show, we have to say this is huge here perfecting um, the passive file system because this is not part of the passive. Everything we're yes. showing now is, is you're adding to it, like the walkability you talked about, water and the other things, is you basically enriching the system and elevating it above its already great approach. Thank you. On um, slide 30, we have another example of you know a water saving device. It's a spray rinse assembly. So, you know, when you get to remodel the house, you get to choose all these like fixtures and everything else. And a spray rinse that you use in a kitchen um, could be, could come from those fancy, smashy, you know, um, high end mm -hmm. residential home, blah, blah, blah mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. But we chose to go with the commercial one because it's more powerful, it's more efficient, you get replacement parts forever, and it works. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> And next slide is our toilet. So uh, once upon a time, you know, the uh, toilets used to take up to six gallons per flush. Um, today, you know, 1.6 gallons per flush mm -hmm. is common, mm -hmm. but we use this toilet called the Niagara Stealth that uses 0 0.8 gallons per flush. Mm -hmm. And that also works well. And I'm gonna um, share on the next slide, uh, 32, um, clothes washing and drying. So washing clothes um, does take energy, and, but even more drying clothes, mm -hmm. especially with um, electric dryer, mm -hmm. can take a lot of energy. So what we chose to do, or uh, this is actually what we discovered after we started living in the house, rather than drying the clothes in the clothes dryer, we just got a bunch of clothes racks um, and just hung our laundry mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. to dry. Mm -hmm. And um, that, gave us two things. One was energy savings, as you would have expected, mm -hmm. and two, can you can you guess what that is? Humidify. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because passive house is actually quite dry, and mm -hmm. um, even if we live in a coastal climate, mm -hmm. um, 
it's relatively dry. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. noticing that, you know, when I'm in Hawaii, I don't have to put on lotion as much because mm -hmm. it's not as dry. Mm -hmm. But back home, you know, you, you turn really scaly. Mm -hmm. So by drying the clothes inside the house, it helps with the humidity. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I, I love these analogies you have, and they're, they're on your blog. You actually, in a very initial chapter, you, st you talk about the appropriateness of attire say we have to wear different clothes at different places mm. and so that's that's how you explain that kind of system so maybe in addition that's the active component in a passive house is that you basically have a controlled moved air system you yes. have an air handling unit that basically takes out um, the, um, the used up air and takes in fresh air but it runs the air over a heat exchanger that takes out the, the heat in a winter condition and vice versa in the in the summer condition and re-injects it into the fresh incoming air. So yes. you always have fresh air that you don't lease the you don't use the thermal energy. And you in a very creative, brilliant way, I love it, basically say that's already an, an, an a dryer. Mm -hmm. You know, I just put my clothes there and that that air goes over it. It goes through the house anyway and it dries it and humidifies it. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, slide thirty three is um, ex example of how we reused reused material, and that's our floor. So our original floor, um, I think, was wood back in nineteen twenty two. Somewhere along the line, carpet, linoleum, tiles, various things got added, and we took all that down. And um, you know, we just refinished the floor, and it has a beautiful distressed look. And um, Having a wood floor actually helps indoor air quality too, mm -hmm. especially in a tight house. Because mm -hmm. I heard somewhere that um, I think carpets mm -hmm. are oh. like seven times heavier when you uninstall it mm -hmm. than when you install it because mm -hmm. all the gunk that gets trapped inside. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Very um, gross. Another gross <laughs> yeah. thing about the conventional <laughs> home. Yeah. And moving on to uh, back to the energy side, the LED on slide 34. Um, one of the things we did, my husband being a photographer with very sensitive eyes, um, he was really picky about what which LEDs mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, use. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we actually went to like a whole bunch of different stores, but a whole bunch of different LED bulbs and tried it out in the fixtures themselves mm -hmm. because they dim differently, mm -hmm. right? Some of them don't dim. Some of them look, the color could be off or not. So we ended up choosing um, three different types of LED bulbs to use mm -hmm, in our house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And those things, you know, you can only do like once you put it into the fixture and, mm -hmm. you know, see it with mm -hmm. the color of the wall and mm -hmm. um, inside mm -hmm. of the house. Mm -hmm. And finally, on slide 35, one of the greatest way that we saved cost is to not to build an addition, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So here, what I, uh, the picture there is a, um, a Murphy bed or a pull down bed, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. during the day, that space is my office where mm -hmm. I, I work. And you know, 90% of the time, 95%, maybe even up to 98% of the time, mm -hmm. it's an office. Mm -hmm. But if we have guests and they want to stay, we just pull down the bed mm -hmm. and I vacate myself for a day, two or three, mm -hmm. and then they can stay. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to add an addition. Wonderful. So this is perfect timing. Thank you so much for this wonderful sharing your experience. And again, you come from your background is you 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 are an IT manager. You come from the biomedical. So there's certain you know affinities, certain relationships. You know you bring in from your from your other life. But you're basically also just a very you know sensitive uh, person who lives uh, very you know here and now and and cares and things. And so. This all comes from your passion. I think I think we should rename you, the product you create. We should call it Passion House, which was that <laughs> tongue breaker that I created. So maybe that's the beginning or the birth of a new system that's actually all encompassing. And that um, and I'm, I love it. You bring back to you know where you come from, from Hawaii. And we want to close off with this picture that I took spontaneously on the way to the show here. And um, it is the current addition to Alamoana. It's going to be the Nordstrom. And it's soon it's going to not look like that anymore because it's going to be enclosed. And as you're saying, you're wonderfully dressed today in an easy breezy way that you can naturally cool off. Um, this is, I think, your message to your home islands and basically rethink how, how we live here. And I think maybe you reintroduce or introduce the passion house slash passive house system to, <laughs> to your islands. 
in saying, you know, if, if every homeowner would do that the way you do it, you basically put the island pretty much off the grid because houses, uh, you know, have an impact of 50, 60 percent of total energy cost. And then if we would leave the addition of Ala Moana, this is my uh, sort of concluding thought-provoking image here, if we would leave it like that, because already doing everything that a house needs to do, that how the passion passive house would look here is basically have a roof, let the breeze go through, not enclose it, and you can see the, f the front of the picture is basically me under the palm tree, so the building would do exactly that. So I think you're, you're here with a very, very important message to basically say people out there don't be afraid of this thing of energy efficiency embrace it passionately and um, you can go a long way uh, for yourself and future generations on your islands so thank you so much for that message um, hope to have you back with more good news about your uh, system of passion house. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. I think I, ha I may have a title for my book. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I'm happy you were here with us. Thank you so much again, Chi. My pleasure.